Visit Hellsberg.com for safe and easy ways to shop this holiday, like free shipping and returns, virtual shopping appointments, or buy online and pick up in store. And right now, get a free Microsoft Surface Go 2 with the purchase of $1,499 or more. You gift, you get. Limited time offer while supplies last. See online or in store for details. What you doing? Trying on glasses with Zenny's 3D Virtual Try On. Wow, that's pretty cool. But those glasses kind of make you look like your Uncle Bob. Oh, not exactly the look I was going for. Um, okay, how about these clear glasses? Oh, or these round ones? Very on trend. I like both on you. You know, I also like these aviator sunglasses. Wait, are those the actual prices? I say get all of them. Seriously, why not, right? Oh, now I want new glasses. Zenni.com. Quality prescription glasses starting at six ninety five. The following is a Hoop Bowl presentation. Welcome to the Fantasy NBA Today podcast. Good morning, Hoop Ballers, and welcome to another edition of DFS Today. I am your host, Santino Cocone. And I am joined once again with the main man, Aaron Asmus. How are you doing today, Aaron? Doing great. Got the last preseason slate here, and uh, we're all geared up. We're ready to go. Yeah, and you said it. We have the last preseason slate for you guys before we get into – we kick it into high gear for the regular season. I'm pretty excited. Uh, there's only three games on this one, but we're getting ready for the regular season. This is what we've been all all been waiting for for the pet, what feels like forever, but it's <laughs> it's only been seventy days or so. <laughs> That's it. Yep. All right, man. Um, and before we get in there, uh, I do want to shout out to our one of our presenting sponsors, My Bookie. Um, if you didn't get in on the My Bookie Turkey Day free play, you're going to want to sign in this weekend because starting on the twenty first. There is six days of free giveaways. Uh, They haven't told us exactly what the giveaways are, but knowing them, they are going to be awesome. Uh, So get on. Time to get in is right now. Get some skin in the game with my bookie where odds boost, lightning deals, and free bets away all season long. And uh, with the NFL playoffs right around the corner, we know that the who these teams are, we know what they are capable of, and it's not difficult to find some value in the lines. Uh, whether you're a first-time customer or have been playing with my bookie for years, there's no shortage of value to be found in the thousands of game lines, unique prop bets, and contests that they offer every week. Sign up or get reloaded today. Find an edge, make your bet, and get paid, guys. They also have a fully-fledged casino platform, giving you access to all the classic table, slot, and card games you'd expect to find at your local spot. And the best part is, at my bookie, the doors never close. Uh, so you can say, so you can continue to build your bankroll even after the stadium lights have gone out. Make the right play and sign up for my bookie uh, today. Uh, and when you do, use the promo code Hoopball. That's H O O P B A L L, and get your deposit matched halfway, all the way up to a thousand bucks. Uh, the terms are simple. Say you put in. Five hundred dollars to match you with another two fifty in your account, and if you're already planning to bet this season, this is free betting money. Uh, so it's winning season at my bookie. Come and join the fun and and win some cash while you're at it. And remember, the promo code is Hoopball H O O P B A L L. All right, um, Aaron, are you a big better? At least outside of D- DFS. Uh, I'd like to be um, eventually <laughs> once <laughs> once it's. Um... Yeah, you know, I'm thinking about moving to Tennessee, so I definitely, when I uh, move out there, maybe ramp up my betting volume. But you know, these for any any kind of betting, just whether it's sports betting or DFS, when you find these kind of promos where you basically get half your money back, it's just you just can't beat it for building a bankroll, especially if you you know you're only starting out with you know maybe fifty or a hundred dollars. That's that goes such such a long way. Yeah, exactly. And uh don't and, and these six days of giveaways, they haven't told us what they are, but I'm knowing them and, and what they did in Thanksgiving and when the NFL season started and college football and all that stuff. Uh now that basketball's starting and it's Christmas, I think these giveaways are going to be uh very, very fun. Very fun indeed. Uh, but yeah, let's get right into this slate, man, what everybody's been waiting for. The last preseason game. Uh games on the docket. 
We have Charlotte versus Orlando. We have Detroit versus Washington, and we have Atlanta versus the Memphis Grizzlies, and that should be a fun one. Uh, we have some news and notes earlier than usual. Uh, we don't always have that. Uh, as, as always with these preseason lines, there are no um, – Game lines or betting lines earlier the day before. We're recording this the night before, so I haven't seen any yet in any of the podcasts I've done. They usually come out the day of and and a few hours before the day of. Just I, I'm assuming they want to know who's playing, who's in and out before they throw out some lines there and, and potentially lose some money. Uh, so there's right. no current lines. Yeah, uh, there's no current lines, and and all three of these teams have played each other already at least once um, in the preseason. So they're pretty familiar with each other, and this is the last chance that anybody's going to get before it doesn't count anymore. Um, but let's start with the Charlotte team, man. We have <clears throat> so far on the news for Charlotte. Um, there's not much news on Charlotte except for the big one is that Gordon Hayward is, they haven't ruled him out, I don't think, per se, but I obviously don't think he's going to be playing in this one. Um, and then we <clears throat> and then we have on the um, Orlando side, not much has changed. Tyler Ennis, uh, well, Tyler Ennis, I, I just I just combined <laughs> their names on that one, as usual. Uh, James Ennis is not playing. Uh, Jonathan Isaac is not playing. Um, Al Farouk Amino is not playing. And Mo Bamba recently returned to the bubble. He got cleared. I'm not the bubble. He returned to the team and got cleared. But I just don't think he had enough time in to play in this one as well. So I think he those guys are out. And um, um, the big news on on. Charlotte is Gordon Hayward and, and Grant Riller is also out. Uh, knowing that, knowing that Hayward's doubtful to play this game, and I even if he is healthy enough to play, I, I, there's no reason to, to put him in here. Uh, how do you see this backcourt shaking out? Yeah, I, I think it's going to be very similar to what you saw the last game. Um, I don't anticipate they really overextend these guys again. You know, So Graham, Rozier, and Melo probably all going to be in that 25 to 28-minute range. But at these price tags, you know, 6300 for Graham, 5900 for Rozier, and just 5300 for LaMelo, I think you got three of the better value plays on the slate just in terms of guys who are going to get a really nice usage boost, uh, ball handling responsibility, and a team that just wants to, wants to play up-tempo and push, especially when Melo is in the game. So I, those, these three guys, these three guards are – Easily three of my favorite plays of the slate. Yeah, and when you don't have too many people to choose from and, and just six teams, uh, right. a lot of people from it, it makes more sense to start stacking teams here. And I'm I'm with you. I think all three of them have varying levels of uh, success depending on what you want your how, how your uh, money shakes out here. But uh, Graham, the most expensive, and Lamella Ball at fifty three hundred. I think that's a steal for him. Um, Rozier had a very good game in that in this last one against Orlando, but he's not the most consistent type of shooter, and he shot 6 of 13 and 3 of 6 from 3. I don't know if I can see that one again, but I can definitely see uh, Graham taking another 17 shots and, and LaMelo taking. He's never he, he's not going to be shy either. I can see him taking right. a ton of shots too. He's, he's just going to be so good for fantasy. Um, I'm hoping <clears> – <throat> Uh, this price tag doesn't catch up the first week or two. Um, j- just the way he plays, he wants to push the tempo, and it's, it's kind of played out in these first three preseason games where, you know, he's looking to make the full the full court pass. He's looking to he's looking to chuck up shots. He goes and grabs rebounds. Like I, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if he ends up starting, and you know, if he's close to like a mid seven k player by the end of the season. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, definitely by the end of the season, too. And you, you're right, especially if they want to take it really easy on Gordon Hayward and not start him in that first one or two games. I would love to see his price tag stay here. <clears throat> I'm assuming, though, when the regular season starts, everybody's price tag gets a little bit higher just because yeah. everyone's so so um, suppressed right now. Uh, but, we'll, but we'll see. At 5,300 seems like a great – even if he jumped to 6,000, uh, that's a, a very, very reasonable price for a guy if he's starting especially. Um, Agreed. But pass on him now. Now that we got the the, I don't know. Why I said pass on him, but let's pass to on over to the forwards and the big guys here. Uh, without Gordon Hayward, we should see more of Miles Bridges, who got bumped from the lineup with with Hayward coming in. We should see more of the Martin guys, the Martin brothers. Um, and how do you feel about PJ Washington, Cody Zeller, and the rest of the bigs down there? 
Yeah, I'm. I'm just. A bit, I'm a big fan of PJ Washington. Um, I don't know what his upside as a player is, but I feel like he's a guy who can eventually kind of be a stretch five down the line. I think he'll be good enough defensively. He kind of he has enough length to play that. He's he's athletic. Um, he does have a de- pretty decent shot. Um, and he's shown showing a little. He showed a little bit of a play, playmaking chops as well. So I, I think he'll be a guy to watch, especially in an offense that I expect to be up tempo and look to push the pace. And I could see there being, you know, just extra possessions in Hornets games. Um, if he's going to stick around this 5K price tag, you know, I, I he's just going to be a really uh, he's going to be a really great value moving forward. And I think in this slate where we're you know, there's Trey Young and John Morant later on in the slate, who are the two most expensive players. You know, I, PJ Washington makes a ton of sense to put in those kind of lineups. Yeah, and and I agree with that too. Uh, I also like a little bit of Miles Bridges in this. Um, I don't like how he's 500 more than PJ Washington because I would prefer Washington here in this specific game. But I, I with Miles with Gordon Hayward not playing, Miles Bridges should, should see more minutes and uh, him getting bumped from the starting lineup and kind of getting in a deeper reserve role because now they have to accommodate for their new star. Um, acquisition and their new star draft pick it kind of i i think it'll light some fire under him and, and see the the potential of the the three steel and and um, block guy that we all expected to get but in this slate in particular the 5k for pj washington seems like a very good deal here yeah on bridges i think him coming off the bench especially if Melo comes off the bench is going to be a good thing for him um he'll see less usage with or court time, rather, with uh, Graham and Rozier. So maybe he'll get more time with the playmaker, get a chance to get up some more shots against more of the reserve role. Uh, so if he, yeah, if he can get back to, you know, 23, 25 minutes, yeah, I, st- I still don't mind the price tag here for Bridges. Yeah, and I agree with that. I think he's going to like playing with ball, a guy who wants to spread the ball around and, and make those uh, highlight reel type passes in the second unit. <clears throat> All right, man. Let's let's flip on over to the Orlando side, uh, the Magic. So we mentioned Aminu, Bamba, Ennis. I obviously Isaac. Uh, none of these guys are going to play in this one. Uh, where where are you leaning here? We saw Vuce hit uh, over the thirty two minute mark in the last one, and Fultz and Fournier both hit the thirty minute mark. Uh, no one else really too many minutes. Gordon. Uh, they, they're trying to ease him in, and Dwayne Bacon was was fourth on, on there, and with nearly 26 minutes, but uh, we have three people hit the 30 minute mark in the last one. We, where are you going with this team? Yeah. If this were the regular season, um, I would be all over Vooch and Fultz mm. at these price tags. Cause I, we talked about it the last podcast, you know, I'm just going to want to attack Charlotte as many ways as I can. <laughs> but I, I think that we should be a little bit wary of magic guys where, you know, there are three core pieces got about 30 minutes. So that kind of, as you said, that kind of smells like that was their final tune-up. So that in this game, you know, before the season, maybe they maybe they just play the first half rotation or, you know, they set out the entire fourth quarter. Just something along those lines um, where they don't treat this as they treated their last game as their preseason tune-up. And this is more just stay fresh, you know, get the first half rotation down and then let their young guys take over in the second half. But that's just kind of a lean. I don't. I don't have anything to base that off of. You know, maybe we'll we'll hear something from beat reporters in the morning and in late afternoon. Uh, any thought? Any thoughts there? What do you on, on that idea? Yeah. So uh, I'm with you. I want to see. Uh, I know, and Clifford is very very good with this, and he's kind of he's one of the more transparent coaches. He's going to let us know before the game what he's what these starters are going to going to play. I remember in the first couple games, uh, he said that they were going to play around twenty ish or so, and and they did. Uh, this game, they three of them played thirty. I'm not really into the Evan Fournier right now, but you mentioned Fultz and Vucevic. Uh, Vuce is the second highest guy on this slate in terms of his price tag. But yeah. if he's if I know if they say yeah we're going to treat it sort of like a like the last game or close to a regular season game if I get any of that sense any of those things um, yeah I Vucevic against Cody Zeller or PJ Washington yes 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 uh, yeah. and, and the rest of this Charlotte team yes he's going to do 
pretty much what he did, 27 and 12, even if he gets you uh, 24 and, and 9 and, and a couple threes and a steal and a block. Um, yeah, I am I am for him here. And Fultz, this is a uh, Graham, Lamella ball. None of those guys are, are going to be great defensively in this game. Um, Rozier's kind of a pest, but he's – uh, he's he's not as good as we thought he was going to be at, defensively when he was coming off the bench in, in uh, Boston. Yeah. So I think I think Fultz has a great matchup in this one too, um, and it all depends on if they say uh, that we're going to scale back their minutes and and you expect in the mid twenties or lower twenties, then I'm going to move off of them. But if I don't get that sense, or if I get the sense where I hear they're going to play normal, then yeah, those, t- those are the two guys I'm looking at here. Uh, even if they say it for most of them, I don't, I'm not fully into uh, Aaron Gordon. Cause I just think that they're going to limit him in this game, no matter what. I, and I'm not going to chase uh, Dwayne Bacon for this one either. I think it, for me, it's, it's what you said, Vucevic and Fultz. Yeah. And even if, we got like 25 Vooch minutes. That's that's probably enough for me on this slate where, again, we've talked about a lot this the last podcast where minutes are just, we expect minutes and price tags to be condensed where, you know, if I get 25 Vooch minutes against the Hornets and Cody Zeller, you know, he easily could be on this three, three game slate, the top fantasy point <laughs> per minute guy. So I... Yeah, just definitely be sure to watch news and you know, Hoopball will hopefully have some updates for us on their on the on their Twitter account. But, you know, if you if we can expect twenty three to twenty five Vooch minutes, I'm still in there. Um I'm just worried I'm more worried about, you know, the seventeen to eighteen minute game where yeah. they they just kinda keep them fresh but just don't extend anybody. And with that said, I have uh, one more guy that I, I wanna ask you about and see if you're um, in uh, into him, and if I get any of the the sense that we're talking about, where the Magic are going to condense their guys' minutes and, and lower them, uh, how do you feel about Cole Anthony? Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's a great opportunity, right? Just l- the last preseason game, you know the the Magic are a team looking to make the playoffs again. You know, so there might not be too many. Yeah, they have an older veteran coach who might not trust rookies or younger players as much. So this might be one of the you know, not last opportunities, but, you know, great opportunities to get Cole Anthony into the mid twenties or, you know, maybe even 30 minutes just to really extend him, see how, see where he's at. And then they they can reevaluate as the season goes on. So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't hate that call at all. Yeah. And I'm with you. I think, um, if we get a sit again, and I keep repeating it, if we're getting the similar sense that they're going to play their starters normal minutes or similar to last game, then I'm not so on to the Cole Anthony. But if if we see Fultz or Fournier are going to get lower minutes, Cole Anthony is going to be creeping up to 25, 30 minute range. Uh, I think that's a, a very good value, and and the guy can shoot, so he can get hot. So uh, that's something to keep an eye on. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me to see Fournier, Vooch, Aaron, Gore, all these, all the vet guys and. You know, maybe they give Fultz the first half round just because he's a younger guy who needs who still needs reps, and you know they just turn the team over to Cole Anthony for a game for a preseason game. Yeah, I could see that. Awesome, man. And do uh, you have anything else on these two teams before we? No, before let's, we move, let's move forward. Yeah, let's move forward. Uh, before we get into the second game, which is the Pistons and the uh, Wizards, let me talk a little bit about uh, our one of our presenting sponsors in Manscaped. So, guys, support for Hoop Ball comes from Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-belt grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels, and I love that. Um, jingle balls to the to the walls, fellas, so listen up. Untrimmed pubes are a thing of the past. It's time to gear up and get yourself the gift of shaving this holiday season. I am talking about the Manscaped Perfect Package 3.0. That's why this revolutionary company, Manscaped, has redesigned this electric trimmer. Their lawnmower 3.0 has propriety advanced skin-safe technology, so this trimmer cuts on your nuts. It's also waterproof, so you can use it in the shower. And... I love shaving in the shower. It's the best thing. <laughs> I don't know about everybody else, but it's it's just easy. You clean it cleans up yourself. Uh, you don't have to have any mess anywhere. Um, but that's just me. But this lawnmower 3.0 comes inside their brand new pack, Perfect Package 3.0, which makes for the perfect gift this holiday season. It's literally everything you need to keep trimmed, cut free, and smelling nice down there. Um, 
So the Manscaped Perfect Package also includes the Crop Preserver, an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. You already put deodorant on your armpits. Why are you not putting deodorant on the smelliest part of your body? And yes, guys, your balls stink. Um, so the Perfect Package 3.0 will also come with a pair of Manscaped boxers that will keep your junk free, feeling fresh all day. Uh, it's time to upgrade those you those overused pair of boxers to Manscaped high performance anti chafing boxers. And the best part about this is you can get 20% off and free shipping with the code HoopBall20. That's H O O P B A L L 20 at manscaped.com. Um, your balls will thank you guys. So get 20% off free shipping with the code HoopBall20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the hoop, the code HoopBall20. Clean your up your nuts and make Santa proud this year. All right, guys, definitely try that out. I love my Manscaped stuff, uh, and it's definitely definitely one of the one of the better products that I own. Uh, so let's move on to the the Pistons and the Wizards. So on the news side, so far we have. Um, on the Pistons, there there wasn't any news that came out yet. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming there'll be some coming out soon. But on the Wizards side, we have quite a bit of news. There's Westbrook is likely to play in his first preseason game. Um, Bradley Beal is questionable. He did not practice on Friday, uh, so that's a ta- that's an actual toss up right there. David Pertans has a good chance to play. He hasn't played yet, uh, but he has a good chance on this one. And Rui Hachimura is out for this one. So a lot of a lot of um, in the in, uh, a lot of news on the wizard side that is in flux at the moment but let's start with the pistons um and the pistons haven't played the the greatest as of yet and there's a lot of people playing in in each game uh, but is there anybody on the pistons in particular that you're going going to look at in this game yeah you know i notice i notice the same thing where they're kind of just playing everybody and there's no real distinction to their rotation or what their rotation is going to look like come the regular season. But I think the one guy who does stand out is Blake Griffin at 5,600. Um, they very well cannot extend him Pat, you know, past this, you know, 20, 25 minute range in this final game. But 5,600 is just, it's just a ridiculous price tag for the type of player that he is in his, usage history and opportunity and you know where we expect him to be come the regular season um you know if we're getting 25 minutes out of him for 5600 especially on this you know this short three game slate like i i don't know if there's it's just hard to beat beat that value i think and you know he very well could you know could sit out the last game we just make sure to tune into news but yeah, uh, Blake Griffin really does stand out at this tag. Yeah, and to me, it's it's they have so much turnover and so many people that weren't on this team last year. Uh, there's only a, a handful that were on this team last year. Um, so I think Casey's just throwing people in there, seeing what matches right now. Uh, not, nobody's played in the last game. No, the highest person the highest minutes on the court was Blake Griffin at 25 25 and a half minutes um and I I think you're right if he if you can get get 25 minutes from him at 5600 he's still Blake Griffin and he's going against the Wizards who don't have a good defense so I like him there too he can he can get you 10 points he's he's a very good passer uh get you some rebounds um another guy I would look at on this slate and this is I would have to see the the injury report when we get closer to make more sense. But if pe- people start missing, Josh Jackson is a little appealing to me at forty five um, forty five hundred. He's a guy yeah. that he's a guy that tends to feast on in these types of scenarios when he's he's he can be the number one option on offense and he just goes out there and uh, there's no pressure because this is a preseason game. But he's a guy who I know he put up 17 and seven last game, but that's that's kind of normal for for him in this situation. I think um, he's one of those guys, especially like I said, in the preseason that he's going to get a lot of shots and he's he's not afraid to take any of those shots. And if we see Blake Griffin get limited or sit or someone else not play, uh, this guy's going to get run and there's really no reliable scorer outside a healthy Blake Griffin on this team. And Josh Jackson might fall into number two, him and Derek Rose, but Derek Rose might not play as well because he's a, he's a veteran and this is the last game. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's a really good call. Um, 
just his last game profile is kind of what you expect out of him. You know, he either hits, he chucks a lot, and if he's hitting his shots, um, you know, and he really does like to get involved, make himself involved mm-hmm. in any facet that he can. And I doubt Rose plays. If he plays, he won't play very much. Um, so, yeah, that's a great call. I I, I hadn't, hadn't really thought about it too much. Yeah, to me, Josh Jackson's the type of guy that when his shot's falling – He's gonna do give you a lot of mo- lot more activity elsewhere. Like he's going to play harder defense. He's gonna jump the passing lanes, grab some rebounds. If his not sh- if his shots not falling, he's very disengaged. He's kind of like a, a Michael Beasley. When his shots fallen, he's he's hyped up and he he's giving you a, a much better effort. But when he's not on, he's kind of like zoned out. So uh, you might like you might get one okay. or the other of of him. But uh, against Washington, I, I think you have a better chance to get the the energetic shots fallen type Josh Jackson. Yeah, agreed. I think it's a good call. All right, let's run on to the the Wizards. And we said um, Westbrook might be playing his first game here. And Bradley Beal might be missing this game. We don't know. He's, he did not practice Friday, so that's up in the air. Uh, we also might get um, Bertans back and Rui's out. So, Knowing these this news and knowing that there's a little bit of up in the ear on this team, uh, where are you looking at? Who do you think's the safest? And if Westbrook plays, do you see him hitting 20 minutes? No, I don't think so. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I think it'll probably be like a he'll play the first quarter first quarter rotation. He'll come back, you know, maybe seven eight minutes left in the second quarter, and then he'll be done for the game sort of situation. But I mean, that's still you know, if he does play, that's still a pretty a pretty significant impact on everyone else's usage and opportunity. But yeah, I think I think a couple guys do stand out here, uh, especially if Beal does miss from the get go. You know, we don't expect Russ to play very many minutes. Um, you know, the Wizards kind of have a lot of younger guys sneakily with that who are pretty good point per minute guys. Uh, Troy Brown, Mo Wagner, Thomas Bryant. Um, I think all these guys, you know, especially if we get good news with if, you know, if Russ does end up missing or if Beal ends up missing, that all these guys get a really significant boost. Yeah. And and I'm I'm with you too. They have a lot of solid pieces that uh, when, when some of these guys are out, that usage just gets funneled to them, and they're pretty good with the usage. Um, you mentioned Troy Brown Jr., Thomas Bryant, Wagner. I would throw uh, Denny in there too. He's yeah, a, Denny for sure. He's a he's a versatile guy with some playmaking ability, um, and I think he'll probably even with Russ. If Russ and Beal both play, I still think he could get you high twenties, uh, low low thirties minutes. Because like you said, uh, Beal only played fifteen minutes last game, and I don't expect Russell Westbrook to play more than mid teens minutes as well. And um I think they're gonna throw a lot at Denny, Troy Brown. Uh it all depends again who who's in and who's out. Even if Bertans they said he's likely to play, I don't think he, he hits twenty minutes either. Yeah, I think uh Denny is a guy I wrote up as one of my favorite value plays. Um just the way they used him the to- want a job where you can use your talents, make a difference, and have the freedom of remote work? Then meet Belay. Belay has contractor opportunities for proven professionals, providing administrative support and social media strategy to fast-paced organizations throughout the United States, all from your home. To learn more, just visit belaysolutions.com slash jobs to apply. That's B-E-L-A-Y solutions.com slash jobs. Today's episode is brought to you by Clorox. When it counts, trust Clorox the same way we trust essential workers to provide the care they give to us. Families trust Clorox to give them a safe and protected home. Our community heroes trust Clorox to keep places like hospitals and grocery stores disinfected. So I know I too can trust Clorox to provide my home with a safe environment at home we can all enjoy. So I have a story for you, Amanda. Um, With Clorox, there's one thing I definitely use it for every single time before I step into my vanity van. Uh, I love the entire place disinfected because that's where I keep my makeup. Uh, That's where I get ready. That's where my clothes are. That's sometimes where I take a nap as well. So, you know, I can use it all over like time of need. So, um, yeah, it's been really, really, it just keeps everything super clean and I, I feel super safe. 
For me, it's important to share with loved ones and the public in general how they can give the most care for their loved ones, especially during times like these. I mean, with the pandemic going on, with COVID going on, it's just great to be extra sanitary with all the items that are around you, caring for others, and you know, just wiping down the door handle after you use the bathroom or wiping down so the So important. The toilet. So important. The toilet handle. Don't forget the toilet handle. (laughs) So remember, when when it counts, counts, trust Clorox. Last game, he was very involved as, you know, uh, a wing playmaker. And they had a lot of the offense running through him. And he was running some pick and rolls and things of that nature. And which is awesome for his price tag of Uh, 47. uh, Yeah, just 40. 4700 you know you don't you don't get that kind of creation that we saw last game for that price tag very often so mm-hmm. yeah i mean i i think he's a guy who he's gonna be very popular i mean kind of everybody is on a three game slate but <laughs> he, you know he at small forward power forward he works with just about any construction you want um you know i, I think he's kind of a, he's a plug and play in this yeah. spot <laughs> And do you do you like Thomas Bryant a lot at his uh, sixty two? Do you like him in around the other people around that range? Like uh, we have Graham at sixty three, uh, Fultz at sixty two. Guys, we talked about um, Rozier at at fifteen. Uh, do you like do you like Thomas Bryant more than those? If you had to just go dollar dollar for dollar. Yeah, uh, probably not more than those guys, but I think Thomas Bryant is great and kind of a more contrarian build um, that that I was kind of working through where, you know, we'll get to it in the next game, but I think most people are just going to start their teams with you know, John Morant and Trey Young and then plug in a, a value like uh, Abdiya and maybe they put in Lamella Ball on that team. Um, just a build like that seems like it's just going to be incredibly chalky where – I think if you start, maybe you fade those guys, you plug in someone like a John Collins or you go a little more expensive at your big spot. And then, you know, you play the the two 6K, 6K guards on Charlotte. You play Thomas Bryant. You play Troy Brown, these kind of guys. You, I think you can build a decent amount of leverage for a three-game slate. Yeah. I like that. I like it, man. And that's why he's one of our, our, our pros here. And, and, and I know you, you like to do more uh, um, tournament games, don't you? Uh, no, I'm actually a cash player. I'm, I've grown uh, up in cash. Yeah, I'm, but I'm going to be really focused in on single entry and three max tournaments this year. So mm-hmm. a lot of my, you know, so a lot of my written content and what I talk about on the podcast will be more cash focused. But when I see different, I'm going to be attempting, <laughs> keyword attempting to improve my tournament game and, you know, kind of really focus in on those, you know, higher dollar, smaller entry, you know, type tournaments. Yeah, I like that. And if you don't plan on playing a ton of lineups, uh, some people put in – if you don't have a, a limit on your lineup, some people just throw in 20, 30 out there. And if you're only putting in one, you're you're just starting off at a huge disadvantage there. So I like to go to the single or three max limit too uh, if you don't plan on playing a ton of lineups. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's a good – you know, a game selection where mm-hmm. in the massive 50K type tournaments, 50K entry type tournaments – you're you're kind of just pulling slot machine for the most part. You know, there there there's different leverages. There's different things you can do to put you in a good position, but you're you need a, some modicum of luck to actually win those tournaments. Where yeah. kind of the smaller fields, single entry, three max tournaments, you're kind of you're able to build more optimal lineups with one you know one or two different kinds of pivots or. You know, like on this slate, you know, if I I think Jaw and Trey are going to be two of the chalkiest pieces on the on the on the slate. If I think I can build similar upside with some of these mid six K guys, you know, like a Thomas Bryant, especially if Beal or Westbrook don't play, you know, with the the two Charlotte guards with Gordon Hayward out, 
um, you know, I, I think I can win some ownership leverage there. So looking without just getting crazy off the board and playing some random play you know, <laughs> that happens to bink, bink you the massive tournament. Yeah, and and I think it even applies more um, to bigger slates. If you're playing a 50K tournament or with no no max limit on how many you can get and you're just throwing in one out there and there's nine games on the slate, um, you're going to like a lot of people that you don't put in your lineup. And then people who are playing 20, 25 lineups, they're going to get all those people that you like in your lineup, but at different spots. So uh, when you're like, oh, I knew I should have had him in there. I liked him. Um, other people are just throwing lineups together and, and meshing them all together. So one of those usually hits. So I, I'm with you on if you don't plan on playing a ton of lineups, the single game entry is is where to go on, on the uh, the tournament type stuff or, or three game or three max limit because uh, then you're not putting yourself so far behind the eight ball, just throwing, taking a shot in the dark there than you are with um, someone who you're going up against people with 15 lineups or even six to one. That's just putting you at a disadvantage. Even if your lineup is rock solid and you have no qualms about it and you love everything about it, you're still putting yourself in, in a disadvantage there. Right. And while some people do, they overblow the people who max center tournaments or they put in a bunch of lineups in tournaments. You know, the big advantage and edge those guys have is they go into those different game selections in tournaments with a plan in mind. They're like, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna fade. We'll just keep applying it to this slate. You know, I'm going to fade Jaw and Trey on all my teams. I'm going to be super heavy on, you know, I'm going to have 70% Devontae Graham. I'm going to have 60% Terry Rozier. And that's how I'm going to end up winning the slate. And then they just do all the different iterations off, you know, off the, these different groupings and rules that, that mm-hmm. they have. And for a lot of people, if they just randomly put in one or two lineups into these big tournaments, they're not giving themselves enough of an opportunity to actually win the tournament. They, they don't think about it in terms of, okay, I'm in this massive field. What do I need? How do I need to leverage myself to actually win the tournament and not just min cash? Exactly. And putting in a ton of lineups isn't guaranteeing you victory. But it's no. like uh, if, if you played the lottery and you played and, and you put in 15 or 30, 30 lottery entries, you just pick 30 different number or uh, selections of numbers, and then you did one, your odds are saying you have a better chance with a 30. Obviously, you're not, you're probably not going to win, or or you're not guaranteed to win. You just have a a better chance, and that's that's what it means to when you're you're going up against no limits and you're only doing one or two. Uh, the people that are doing a ton just have that opportunity to, to cash in at a, a higher rate. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, for me, I've tried MME in the past, and it just it doesn't fit my skill set. Mine is building optimal lineups and, you know, knowing where the field is going to tend to go in, in cash games. And for me, if I can build, you know, one to three really great tournament lineups and focusing on that same, those same ideas of building really great floor, you know, floor teams that I think are, that I know are going to perform relatively well, and then just finding ways to, to leverage ownership. So I actually get my chance to win a tournament. Uh, that's, that's just going to be that just fits how i play dfs better so that's i mean that's just a skill set everyone listening is going to have to figure out for themselves yeah and i like it man all right and uh quickly after that we need to pause the show for a minute uh because i have announced an announcement and it is a fun one it's free stuff everybody likes free stuff right aaron do you like free stuff i love free stuff uh, yes, we love free stuff. And, and you, you guys might be asking, what is the free stuff? Uh, this free stuff is the bruise letter, and the bruise letter is back. Uh, back and fresh for the 2020-2021 MBA season. And this is from our founder, Aaron Bruski. It's a writing piece and an email newsletter filled with his most intimate fantasy nuggets. It's exclusive content, guys. You cannot find anything this anywhere else and i will repeat that you cannot find this anywhere else it's not on the website it's not on any podcast i i can't give it to you uh aaron can't give it to you we can't no one else on the team can give it to you it's not on social media it's only in the email newsletter and you can sign up to get this and get it for free um just go to bit.ly slash bruise letter that's b-r-e-w 
S L E T T E R 2021 and sign up today. It takes 10 seconds. And again, the site is bit.ly slash bruise letter 2021. And Aaron Bruski is straight into your inbox and enjoy. Again, guys, you can't find this anywhere. It's only in the email newsletter. And I'll, I'll tell you, in, if you don't want it, it's free. And it, it is fantastic. You'll start to like it the more you get to it. Um, I really, I really enjoyed it last year, so I definitely signed up again. Um, but, yeah, it's email in your newsletter. You can read it at any time. It doesn't take – it'll be very quick when you're – bored or you're waiting in line whatever the case may be uh, when you're on the toilet just give it give it a read you're gonna have a great time and there's one more thing i have to let everybody else know um the fantasy pass so everybody likes hoop ball and i we, hopefully you think it's a great website and you love the content because we are on the content aaron uh <laughs> and we all love that it exists but hoop ball needs to keep the lights on so for a few weeks every year we sell stuff guys and this year the best deal in fantasy is here at hoop ball and it's called the fantasy pass it's just 4.99 a month so five dollars and it gets you an entire draft guide the brewski 150 our dfs pass and all in-season fantasy tools how cr- that's just crazy and only for Four ninety nine for all that stuff. So cook yourself a dinner tonight inside instead of ordering delivery, and you can afford the Fantasy Pass for half a year. Uh, so please do check it out. Head to hoopball-.com and click on the Fantasy Pass ad just below the main media wall. And for us, if you just wanted the DFS Pass, it is only one ninety a month. Uh, but also the fantasy Crazy. pass come if you're a fantasy right one ninety nine a month for everything we have on the DFS pass. Uh, but if you also like season long, extra three dollars a month, and you also get fantasy DFS pass and fantasy pass um, fantasy season long. So there's so much good stuff going on there, and it's not that much. It's it's very affordable and cheap, and everybody can get into it. Um, and before and I guess we can go right into that last game. Uh, again, DFS it. pass, fantasy pass, but we'll go right into Atlanta versus Memphis. So we have some news on both of these teams. We'll start with Atlanta. Rondo, Tony Snell, Chris Dunn, Akangu. I love that guy, and I know I'm going to mess up his name so much this year, um, but I really <laughs> like him as a player. Uh, the, the, all, all four of those guys are out. We have Capella is probable and Cam Reddish is probable. On the Memphis side, we have Triple J, Winslow, uh, Killian Tilly, Jonte, uh, all three of those are out with Xavier Tillman. Jonte Porter is now doubtful. He got an upgrade to doubtful. And Aaron, Bro- or, well, Aaron Brooks, throwback, Jesus, with <laughs> <laughs> throwback there. Um, but we have uh, <clears throat> Dylan Brooks as questionable. Uh, he, he came out questionable today. I think he's going to play, but they said he was a little bit sore. And, uh, that's what we have on the news. Let's start with Atlanta. And you mentioned a couple people already in Collins and Trey Young uh, that you, you want to have some exposure to. Uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, what you like in this matchup for them and if there's anyone else on this squad that you're um, you're feeling here. Yeah, I mean, if, if this were a regular season game, this is where most of the ownership would uh, coalesce, I suppose where these are just two teams. They're two young young teams that want to push the pace. You know, they want to play fast. Uh, they have really exciting young options uh, who are already really good. Um, and that's kind of what we want in DFS. We want high-scoring teams that don't really play a whole lot of defense. Um, unfortunately, I don't think these teams will get too overly extended. They both have been really good at kind of keeping their preseason rotation condensed to who's actually going to play in the regular season. But on the Atlanta side, um, I mentioned Trey Young as I, I just think he's the best the best overall play on the slate. You know, if he gets 25 minutes, just his usage profile. At Zenny, you get the same quality frame and lens options that you'd get from an optician for one-tenth of the price, including blue blockers, progressives, prescription sunglasses, and more. The best part? Try on any frame, anywhere, with our 3D virtual try-on. Zenny.com. Eyewear for everyone. Uh, the matchup, uh, the super up-tempo matchup, he's kind of, he's controlling controlling the offense just the way he has the last couple of seasons. Um, wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if he's the highest scoring player on the slate, but he's going to be, as I mentioned previously, he's going to be overly chalky. 
So if you're looking to differentiate, I think there's definitely options to pivot off him. Um, and then going down a little bit, I'm hoping he doesn't end up starting, but Bogdan Bogdanovich at 5,200. He's had a really nice role in these first couple games with the Hawks. And his profile is that of a, you know, a secondary playmaker and a scorer. So if he's getting back into the 25-minute range, if he gets some usage away from Trey, uh, I think his upside for this price tag is a lot better than just about anyone else on the slate. I like that. And yeah, obviously Trey and, and Collins, they're they're going to be a little bit chalky. They're more expensive. Uh, if they see the type of run that they saw, which is 26 and 29 minutes the last game, um, that's what you probably expect if they play. Uh, and I, I'm with you. I think... I like Bogdan better off the bench. I think Cam Reddish fits better with them in the starting lineup. Um, I like Cam Reddish's game more as a as a team type of player, and I like Bogdan as when he's the main ball handler and controlling the ball better than when he's playing off ball. Uh, so yeah. I think he would fit better in a six man role. But I just don't know if they asked him to do that and if he wants to do that because I know he didn't like it really in in Sacramento. So uh, that's something to keep an eye on. But if he's coming off the bench, like you said, I think he get, his usage definitely goes up. Um, he'll probably still still see the same amount of minutes, 26, 27 or so. Uh, and I think he's going to get more assist and, and just be more involved. I, li- I like him better off the bench. If he starts, I uh, kind of – he still has a solid solid floor there with a cheap, with a cheap price tag at 5200 But it kind of uh, turns me off a little bit to him. Um, and I'd probably stick with Trey Young or John Collins. Um, Outside of that, if I want to see if Clint Capella plays at at uh, his price tag at fifty seven hundred, that's not bad. If he's if he's fully healthy and, re- and ready to go in this one, uh, you give him twenty four minutes, you can expect a double double with a block or two, or, or close mm-hmm. to a double double. Uh, that's never never bad for a guy under six k. Yeah, um, the rest of these guys, I'm I'm just not sure. Like they mm-hmm. they all kind of played in the mid twenties. So I'm just a little worried with all these starting rotations on just if you look back at their game log where it seemed like they kind of got their pre their regular season tune up already. Um, So this will definitely be a slate. I think we need to just be sure to pay attention to beat reporters. And if there's any news that comes out that says, you know, John Collins and Trey and Gallo and Bogdan are only going to play the first half, then it's all you know, it's all the young guys in the second half. Like I think information like that is just, is going to be the most important on the slate. Yeah. And that'd be huge. And if we get that, then I'd be, uh, I like Cam Reddish there. Uh, Deandre Hunter has been playing very well. Um, but without that news, I, I, it's very hard to trust him. Cause then you have uh queer tear. <laughs> I know I got, I got some <laughs> stuff for saying that name last night, but you got weirder um, Gallo still there. You have a lot of people out playing there, which is there's just so many people for not a lot of uh, for there's only so many minutes to go around um, on a normal regular season slate. It's hard to trust them. But if like you said, if they're going to only play a half, if we get that news, I like Reddish the most out of uh, out of the Hunter and the Weirders and um, Gallo. I, I can't assume he's going to play a lot, even if they only play the starters too much or if they limit the starters. Yeah, agreed. <laughs> Right, man. Let's get into this last last team, and and there is another couple chalky guys here. Um, and we, you mentioned him earlier, Ja. He's probably going to be very chalky. I know he's he's eighty three. Uh, and 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 J Val, if he's playing a full amount of minutes, is a very good option as well. And and he's up there. I think he's uh, the fifth highest guy on this slate at eight k. Um, but how do you like them too? And uh, outside of them. Is there anybody else you're looking at? We mentioned Dil- uh, Dylan Brooks is questionable. He might, he's probably going to play, but uh, they could always just take it easy on him and let him go. And he's had a lot of usage lately, taking a lot of shots. So if he doesn't play, where would you think uh, after you answer or after we go with the first ones, where do you think his usage would go to? Yeah, uh, so I'll start with Jonas. Uh, he's, I think he's been my favorite player of the preseason. Um, just the way, just the way he profiles as a player is, you know, this, this kind of normal run for him. He kind of hangs out in the 25, 22 to 28 minute range in a normal regular season rotation anyway. And he just has games where he just spikes, he spikes for a massive, you know, 40, 45 point game. So you're not really losing all that much, uh, regular season equity with Valanciunas as you are with a lot of the other guys. 
And without Jaron Jackson, he just he just has a much better op- he just gets a much better opportunity with uh, just shots shots in the post and rebounding and just kind of being uh, the main the main rim protector on the team without yeah. Jackson there. Um, so he's he's my second favorite expenses spend of the day uh, behind Trey. And for you're talking about Dylan Brooks. Um, the shot profile is good, but you know it's just sixty seven hundred for a guy who's so dependent on his shot falling and him just really lighting it up. You know, he's all he he was last year. He was a guy who took a bunch of shots too, and you were kind of always paying around like the five to fifty five hundred for him. So I think this price tag is a little is more of an overreaction to his really great game the last time out. And I, as you said, he's already questionable. They might just say if he does play, hey, go play 15 minutes and stay warm, kind of a thing. But well, um, what I meant is, uh, if Dylan Brooks doesn't play because he's questionable now, where do you, where would you expect a lot of that usage to in uh, shot attempts? Where would you expect that to funnel? Do you think it goes straight okay. to uh, funnel around everybody? Do you think Grayson Allen becomes a a solid play there, or uh, do you think it just goes back to Ja and and the double J's out there and Ja and J- Jonas? Yeah, uh, I think I think Grayson Allen would be a lot more secure of a play. He, he I think he he started the last game, uh, which I thought was really interesting. That, that might mm-hmm. be the, the direction they go once the regular season starts, because it looks like Jackson is going to end up missing. So they'll go, you know, Kyle Anderson at the small ball four, we Brooks down to the three, and then Allen kind of as the operating as the spacer for everybody. Um, that wouldn't surprise me in the slightest, and I think he's a guy they want to keep getting a look at, keep getting him some shots and some development time. Um, outside of him, you know, um, they gave DeAnthony Melton the big contract in the offseason. You know, if we get news that Ja ends up getting limited, I think Melton becomes an awesome, awesome play, um, along with Grayson Allen. So, yeah, I think it's Allen, it's Morant. You might get Desmond Bain in there for a little bit, but... Uh, for the most part, I, I think it would just funnel to the normal guys. You know, Jaw, Jonas, Grayson Allen, um, yeah. Anthony Melton. And I'm with you. And and I think Jaw's use is just, just going to be extraordinary right now. And until we get Justice Winslow in, in a uniform and on the court with this team, which he hasn't been able to in, since he's been traded, uh, there's no one really – who can handle the ball and, and initiate this offense quite like Ja um, Melton kind of, but Tyus Jones hasn't been too good. Uh, he's, he's strictly a backup here, but there's no one else in this, in this major rotation part um, that can initiate like him. And, and I think if Brooks goes, a lot of it goes to Ja and, and some of it goes to Grayson Allen and, and other people around there. Um, but yeah, I'm with you. I think, uh, the both Jays, Jonas and and Ja are are the guys to look at here. Um, if you need a cheap guy, maybe, maybe I, I don't. I like um, Kyle Anderson slow mo at his the the small ball four here. I, I think he's much better as a small ball four than a uh, slow <laughs> small forward yeah. out there. So I, I don't mind slow him mo, there. I, I, yeah, that guy. <laughs> I don't. I don't even want to know how much money I spent on slow mo last season. <laughs> I, mean, I he's a good player. He's one of those guys who's a good player. He's a good team defender. He moves the ball well. Like he's. I understand why he's on the floor. He's a good basketball mm-hmm. player, but he's just the absolute worst for fantasy. Like I, I can't yeah. do it anymore. <laughs> and I, I just, I just think he's better at a four as a four than a, than a five. Um, but yeah, I don't. I, uh, if, if I'm if I'm in that boat, I, I don't mind him, but I do like um, Grayson Allen a little bit more. I think he has more upside, and he's he's a little bit cheaper as well. Yeah, Grayson Grayson's got that shot upside, which um, especially if we get some news that Dylan Brooks is out, one of the main guys uh, aren't don't don't end up playing. I think a lot of that funnels to Grayson Allen. Yeah, he doesn't mind shooting threes. Um, yep, <laughs> he's not shy about shooting and letting it fly out there. All right, man. Uh, so before we head on out of here, is there anything else you want to tell the viewers for and the listeners? I, I say viewers. There's no one viewing us. I know we're not on video. Uh, but is there anything else you want to let these listeners know for the last preseason game before we get back into the regular season? 
Yeah, um, I'll be on the Discord tomorrow answering any questions. And we got that set up this week. And we've already had people talking in the DFS chat and everything else. Um, I think that's, again, that's going to be worth the price of admission. Even if you don't listen to the podcast or read, you know, read the article, which I would recommend, by the way. But um, just for the Discord where you get a lot of us are going to be hanging out there regardless. You know, I think we we have it set up for an hour before lock where uh, one of the content guys is going to be in there answering questions. But you know, in my experience, a lot of the content guys just end up hanging out in the Discord anyway and talking about lineup construction and different plays for the day and breaking news. Um, I it's, it's just one of the best resources. Yeah, and and I agree. And uh, yeah, definitely read the article, especially tomorrow. Aaron's going to be the one writing it. I love reading his articles myself, and I think it's going to be a a good one. Uh, There's only three games on there, so try and get as much information as you can while you can. Uh, And then definitely continue to monitor situations, um, who's in, who's out, and what if anybody's going to be limited. Because especially, I mean, in the preseason, it's always a who's playing what anyway. Uh, but especially on the literal last day of the preseason, at any moment's notice, someone can, uh, one of the coaches can say, "Yeah, you, you don't look right," or you, you tweak the finger, and any type of little nick and cranny out there, they'll just say, "Yeah, let's shut them down. Let's let them get ready for when it counts." Yep, I mean that's um, no one, you know, no coach wants you know their their star getting hurt in this last meaningless preseason game. So any excuse they look for, they'll, they'll either sit their guy or play him 10 minutes. Yep. All right, man. And um, yeah, that's it for the last podcast of the preseason. The next time you hear us will be on uh, the 22nd. And what is the 22nd? It is a Tuesday and it is a two game opening, opening night slate. I almost said day, Uh, but we'll have the, Warriors versus the Nets and the Battle of L.A. also. Um, and that's going to be fun on, on the regular season. We'll also have Christmas. We can't wait for the Christmas Day special. In between that is going to be a bunch of teams. But uh, that's going to be where we start, and it's going to be a fun one. And on behalf of myself, uh, Santino Cocone, and you can find me on Twitter at Santino Cocone. That's S-A-N-T-I-N-O. And uh, Aaron, where can they find you? Yeah, I'm over at Asmus Sports, A-S-M-U-S-S-P-O-R-T-S on Twitter. All right, awesome. And uh, this was our last preseason podcast. I am your host, Santino Cocone, and I'm with Aaron Asmus. And thank you guys for joining us on DFS today, and have a good night. This has been a Hoop Ball presentation.